All right, here we go, guys. We got to catch up a little bit because I went too fast yesterday and actually ran out of time with 15 minutes. So going back to Stonewall Jackson, he gets his nickname during the Battle of Manassas for pretty much standing like a stone wall. His soldiers, while they're retreating, actually at the beginning of the battle, while they're retreating, they look up and they see this crazy guy, their leader, their general, sitting on his horse at the top of a hill, cannons going off around him, people trying to shoot him, and he's just refusing to move. He was very religious. He thought that if he, would sh be, if he was shot and killed, that it was God's reason to do that. So he just didn't fear death at all. And while standing there on his horse, while his men are retreating, his men stop, turn around, and say, hey, look at Jackson standing like a stone wall. And the name kind of sticks. He becomes a rallying factor or a motivational guy for his troops. If they see their general standing there getting shot at and not dying and they're, they're going to follow along with that. So they turn around and go on to win the battle at Manassas. Uh, moving on to the third battle, we have the Seven Days Campaign, which of course lasts for 72 days. Just joking for those of you that are doing the math. It is seven days only, and there's the dates, June 25th to July 1st. takes place in uh, right outside Richmond, Virginia, and it is a battle won by the South, the Confederate States of America right there. The northern leader is a new guy named General George McClellan, who is very indecisive, meaning that he doesn't make quick decisions. He likes to sit back and wait to see thing hap things happen. Listen, everybody, sixth period. There is your sixth period bell. So the McClellan is a very indecisive guy. He sits back and waits for things to happen before going on the offensive. He likes to see the way Robert E. Lee reacts to things, and then he reacts. So in some cases, most of the time, that's a bad thing for your general to be indecisive. You like a general or a coach who's going to go out and try to go after it and just get after it as hard as they can, try to win at whatever cost necessary. In his case, he's not. So he's not the best general to begin with, and he's going against the South, Robert E. Lee and Stonewall Jackson here. This is an attack in Richmond. The North is going to try to capture Richmond multiple times during the war. That's because Richmond is the capital of the South. The South defends it after seven days. Uh, Lincoln is very upset that McClellan doesn't keep pushing to try to capture uh, Richmond. So Lincoln, one of the first times, he will get fired a couple times, but Lincoln is very upset with McClellan, tells him, like, hey, if you don't, listen to do anything like if you don't listen to me and push to what I want you to do since I'm the commander-in-chief I can fire you uh, casualty number wise in a week of fighting 36,000 men killed wounded or missing All right, uh, we're moving on to the next battle, which is the second battle of Bull Run. For those of you keeping track at home, after the first battle of Bull Run comes the second battle at Bull Run. And it's fought again at Manassas, Virginia. And it takes place on August 29th to August 30th in Virginia. The logo for the flag right again is the Confederate States win. And again, for the North, they have a new... A uh, new general, his name's uh, Pope. He's the new general who gets fired after the battle when they lose. Again, the North goes through lots of coaches, just like the Cleveland sports teams do. Uh, the North, just to give you an idea of the size of these battles, in two days of fighting here in Mana Manassas, Virginia, there are 75,000 soldiers for the North. That's the entire Cleveland Brown Stadium filled to the max. For the South, they have General Stonewall Jackson, Robert E. Lee, a new general named General Longstreet, the same guys as always, and they bring to the table 55,000 soldiers. So this is 130,000 soldiers. Break out your calculators and make sure I did the math right. But 130,000 soldiers, which is twice the population of Mentor, Ohio to fight this one battle in two days. The South wins again in Manassas. The North loses several of their generals during the fight. So again, if they're not dying, they're getting fired. Uh, the Right now, a year into the war, almost two years into the war, the South is winning the war. And they come up with new goals to take back the Mississippi River, to recover Tennessee and Kentucky and make Tennessee and Kentucky into southern states, and to invade and try to take over Maryland, which is a border state which does have slavery, with the goal is to surround D.C. Uh, casualties for the battle, 25,000 people killed, wounded, or missing. And moving on to the song of the day. Uh, if you don't know that by now, you need to start paying attention to modern music. But that, the band name is actually something if the South had, they would easily won if they had imaginary dragons, or even real dragons for that matter. And if they breathed fire, it would be phenomenal and dangerous if you were a northern soldier. So just in case, dragons are amazing. Uh, moving on to battle number five is the Battle of Antietam. This takes place in Maryland. The North is in, or the 
south is invading in a way maryland which is a border state so it is close to the south the, the south comes into antietam which is the area in maryland if you look at who wins that's right everybody it's a big northern victory we haven't seen that flag in a while but they do win here uh, the North has General George McClellan, again, the indecisive guy, but they also have a new general, this guy over here, with phenomenal facial hair. Check that out. What isn't growing on the top of his head up here is growing on the sides of his face. Those are called mutton chops. Now, his name is Ambrose Burnside, and his soldiers, to make fun of him, call him by his facial hair almost, and they call him Sideburns. They take his name and flip it around, and we get the name Sideburns from this general. So there you go, random history fact of the day. For the South, Robert E. Lee. Stonewall Jackson, same guys. Uh, the North wins here. If you look at the pictures, here's a still picture of something called the Sunken Road, where the North was on the road that was a little lower than the land, and the South was shooting at them. You have the area, the Sunken Road, you have the bridge up here where there was a battle. The bridge itself is very narrow, and there were just hundreds of soldiers fighting onto it, falling into the creek. They actually said for weeks after this battle that Antietam Creek flowed red because of the amount of blood spilled into it during the battle. Uh, the idea here is that the North wins over a day of fighting. This is the bloodiest single day of fighting our country has ever seen. That's going back to the 1700s all the way till today. This is the single bloodiest day in American, in, in the American Armed Forces history. That more American soldiers died or were wounded here this day than ever before on any other day in our history. So, big important battle. The idea is that, or the major point is that when the North wins, they're close to Richmond, Virginia. If McClellan was decisive, if McClellan was an offensive guy and wanted to push right down into Richmond, Virginia, he could have defeated the, the South and taken over the war and basically won it for Abe Lincoln, but he doesn't. McClellan's very, hey, he's happy he won a battle here. He wants to stay in, in Maryland and kind of fortify everything there. So he's afraid that there's a bigger army sitting in Virginia waiting in Richmond, and there's not. So Abe Lincoln, again, is very upset with him. He's going to fire him soon. Casualty numbers, almost 5,000 people die fighting on the battlefield, and over tw about 20,000 people are wounded or missing in the one day of fighting. Right after this is a big significant battle because after the battle takes place, it's a huge American victory. First big American victory of the war. Abe Lincoln makes or creates the Emancipation Proclamation, which is made on or written on September 22nd, which is to take effect on January 1st of 1863. It frees the slaves in all Confederate or Southern states. This is a huge game changer. This now creates the war is now about, in Abe Lincoln's mind, the war is now focused on ending slavery. So he's freed the slaves in the Confederate states, which really doesn't help the slaves in the border states in the north. He can't free the slaves in all the states because he would lose Maryland and he would lose Kentucky and Tennessee, the states that allow slavery. So he allows slaves from the south to try to uprise and get to the north to help them fight. That's what he's trying to do. Oh, wow, that was pretty loud. Probably loud on you guys, too, but here we go. Uh, next number, battle number six, is the Battle of Fredericksburg, which takes place in Virginia. It's on December 13th of 1862. Looking at the flag once again, the south wins, the stars and bars win. For the north, you have a guy named Ambrose Burnside, sideburns, comes back. You have a new general named Joseph Hooker. Now, before you laugh at what his last name sounds like, his last name is based on the slang term, of what those kind of people are like because his regiment had girls that would follow along and during when those gentlemen got paid for their month-long duties of being in the army those girls would travel along and offer their services in a way for some of that uh, for the south you have Stonewall Jackson, Robert E. Lee, General Longstreet, same guys as always the north is almost trying to invade again to get to Richmond they're trying to destroy the best army the south has which is Stonewall Jackson's army and they are defeated horribly the south besides having Stonewall Jackson, is actually using a stone wall pictured here. They build a stone wall around the city to help fortify it. No longer is the idea of a gentleman's war making sense. The idea that standing shoulder to shoulder and getting shot doesn't work for the South. They're running out of people. The South doesn't have the people to keep filling in body-wise going through battles where they're standing shoulder to shoulder. So when they can, they're going to fortify. And the South builds this wall around the city of Fredericksburg to defend themselves. And they basically use it like an assembly line. The guy up front's the best shot. He fires his shot, hands his rifle back. The guy behind him grabs a new rifle, hands it to him that's loaded, gets the other rifle to hand it back to a third guy who loads the rifle. So that's the way it was. It was a great technique for the South. It mowed down and destroyed the North. 
there that's why the casualty numbers are two to one more than two to one because the north was moving up these hills to get to this wall and when they were at the wall they were just getting mowed down pretty easy like target practice so again another huge defeat for the north another big victory for the south All right, uh, battle number seven is the Battle of Chancellorsville, which is on April 27th through May 4th in 1863 in Virginia. Again, the South wins another major battle. The North has General Meade, General Hooker. The South has General Stonewall Jackson and Jeb Stewart. Uh, the South is winning the battle. The reason why this battle is so important is that during one of the evenings of the battle, one of the early evenings of the battle, the generals would always go around on horseback and ride around to see the layout of the battlefield, see where their soldiers are located, where their soldiers can move on the next day, where they can try to get an upper hand on their enemy. And Stonewall Jackson, while riding around with his other generals, is shot by his own men, his own men, a group of snipe snipers, actually mistake him for a northern soldier and shoot him once in the right hand, two times in the left arm, which his left arm gets amputated or cut off at the shoulder, and he dies two days later from disease when it sets in. Now, Robert E. Lee, when he hears that Stonewall's lost his left arm, his quote is that he's lost his left arm, but I've lost my right arm, or I've lost my right, meaning that he's, lo he's lost his right-hand man, his guy that is super important to him, his most important general. So the South loses their best, most important general of the war, besides Robert E. Lee, here in this battle by his own men. Now, even though they win, it's kind of a mini turning point in the Civil War. Uh, the North and South are equal kind of with battlefield deaths. Wounded is kind of the same, but missing. If you look at the North, again, a lot of these men are running home, going away. They're, they're afraid to keep fighting. So if you look at the huge amount of missing numbers, that's what that means. All right. If you didn't know, that's Imagine Dragons, by the way. So you can play along and listen to that CD at home as you go. We're going Pandora or iHeartRadio, for that matter. I'm not sponsored by anybody. Uh, the last battle of the day is the Battle of Vicksburg, which takes place in Mississippi. We're changing kind of the focus right now. We're going over to the Mississippi River, the western front of the war. And if you look, America wins this battle. They've controlled the Mississippi. There it is in the background of the painting. And it is a siege, meaning that the north gets there, surrounds the fort of the city or surrounds the city for six weeks. And for six weeks, there are little battles going on and kind of like a siege at a fort, which you guys saw during Last of the Mohicans. And after six weeks, the north finally takes the city of Vicksburg. The south surrenders after they have no supplies left. The north takes over 29,000 prisoners. Uh, you'll see at the end of this chapter, at the end of the notes, what happens to some of those prisoners at some of the uh, concentration camps almost that are set up. Casualty numbers in, in almost a month of fighting, or over a month, six weeks, over 50,000 people are killed, wounded, or missing. Again, huge numbers, and we've talked about why with the better technology and everything else going on. All right, hopefully you guys took some notes. I am out of breath. We flew through this. Good job. Study for your quiz for tomorrow.